This episode of News Dump is brought to you by Upstart. Oh, we have a big movie news for you this week. Movie news? Yeah. Well, technically, yeah, it's movie news. Um, because after getting banned from Twitter, and then getting his pillow company banned from Twitter, and then getting verbally shoved off of his spot on a Newsmax broadcast, my pillow CEO, Mike Lindell, had one last trick up his sleeve. I'm going to become the director. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, it was a last-ditch effort that would somehow prove that the 2020 presidential election was stolen from his best friend, Donald J. Trump. Well, this movie was announced earlier in the week, and we could only assume that it would be an absolute train wreck that included nothing more than the desperate ramblings filled with misinformation from a man whose back and company are up against the wall right now because of a potential billion-dollar lawsuit. Yeah, um, I, my interest is peaked. I am intrigued. Uh huh. It's just like how that Dinesh D'Souza guy releases a movie every six months, and it's just like, well, this is going to be uh, garbage and pure disinformation. But I'm curious. Yeah, like, and we'll get to it, but all of these are just like r ramblings of conspiracy theorists edited together by the cheapest person they could find on Fiverr.com. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's capitalism, baby. Yeah. The the editing is the best part. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. So for a brief recap, if you're not caught up on my pillow news, yeah. Mike Lindell is the CEO of My Pillow, a pillow company. He's a Trump loyalist and one of the last remaining people of any note, and that might be a stretch, but yeah. he is a person of note who is clinging to the false narrative that the 2020 election was stolen from Trump, and he's been repeating it publicly to anyone who will listen. Mm -hmm. uh, Dominion Voting Systems, as well as another company, Smartmatic, have recently filed lawsuits against a slew of conservatives and outlets and talking heads for uh, insinuating that they did election tampering. Yeah. Uh, Mike Lindell, at the very least, has received a cease and desist letter from Dominion because he keeps peddling the claims that their machines were responsible for the widespread supposed fraud. Yeah. And on Friday of this week, Mike Lindell released his two-hour-long documentary movie titled Absolute Proof online. And also, it was simulcast on One American News. Yeah. And I think it was longer than two hours. It's, no, uh, he said it was going to be five, or he said it was going to be three hours. But it only ended up being two hours. So I am very curious of, I want to see the uncut director's yeah, cut of this. Yeah, I want to release the Lindell cut. Yeah. Uh, also, it should be noted that uh, on the way in, uh, or right at the end when I was writing this, news broke that uh, Fox Business had fired Lou Dobbs and canceled his show. And that is almost certainly related to the Dominion lawsuit. Yeah, he's a liability. Yes. He keeps saying shit's going to get a suit. The Lou Dobbs Tonight Show was their highest rated show on the Fox Business Network. And they canceled it immediately. He's gone. So, I'm sure he'll immediately get picked up by OAN or... Newsmax. I think he's a liability for everyone. Yeah, I don't know. Um, now, despite the name of the documentary being Absolute Proof, the film itself does little more than trot out the same exact false claims and data that he's been peddling since at least November. Uh, and it's joined by guests uh, who have previously been made fools of during testimony in various states. Yeah, it's a real, like, who's who of uh, just insanity yeah. on here. There's people I forgot about. Yeah. There's like people that, who testified in Georgia. Like there's that, that lady from the, the Giuliani hearing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I signed something saying, I gotta go to jail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's the colonel from uh, one of the Georgia hearings. Yeah. Uh, they're all there. And since the truth that he tries desperately to convince his audience to believe has already been disproven, and the lies regarding voting, si voting systems are the now the target of lawsuits not even oan was taking any chances when they aired this thing mm -hmm. uh, they had a hilariously long disclaimer that ran before it aired we don't know how this got here <laughs> yeah. and they even read it aloud just to be sure that anyone watching was aware that oan had nothing to do with this documentary well, production. you got to imagine uh, a good portion of their audience does not have good enough eyesight to yeah. read this this disclaimer, which was basically written by written by a team of attorneys to be very thorough. Yeah, they had to read it out loud because yeah. they're like, we have to cover every base here. Yeah. Uh, and they also point out that, uh, okay, they had nothing to do with the production. And Mike Lindell literally paid to put this on their air. Paid promotion. This does not reflect the views of... <laughs> it was like he bought like a MyPillow ad. The Slap Chop is not a product of Fox... So, it's, I would, it's simply 2 a.m. and uh, we need to fill the airtime. I wouldn't be surprised if he was like, all right, how many ads for my pillow are we running this month on your network? I want to combine all Just that airtime and run my documentary. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. No. Uh, and uh, also they, they go on to say in their disclaimer, basically, please don't sue us. He paid to show this here. Uh, here here's, here's the clip of their disclaimer. 
Michael James Lindell has purchased the airtime for the broadcast of this program on One America News Network. Mr. Lindell is the sole author and executive producer of this program and is solely and exclusively responsible for its content. The topic of this broadcast is the 2020 election. OAN has undertaken its own reporting on this topic. This program is not the product of OAN's reporting. The views, opinions, and claims expressed in this program by Mr. Lindell and other guests, presenters, producers, or advertisers are theirs and theirs alone and are not adopted or endorsed by OAN or its owners. In particular, OAN does not adopt or endorse any statements or opinions in this program regarding the following entities or people. U.S. Dominion, Inc. and any related entities. Smartmatic USA Corp, Brian Kemp, Brad Raffensperger, or Gabriel Sterling. Further, the statements and claims expressed in this program are presented at this time as opinions only and are not intended to be taken or interpreted by the viewer as established facts. The results in the 2020 presidential election remain disputed and questioned by millions of Americans who are entitled to hear from all sides in order to help determine what may have happened. Wow, that's airtight. Definitely seems like something you'd see before a factual and trustworthy <laughs> documentary. Yeah. When I'm telling the truth, I always, uh, you know, start things off with a lengthy and thorough, legally uh, unambiguous statement yeah. about it. They might as well have played the uh, uh, the jackass intro before it, yeah. too. <laughs> Warning. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we watched a decent amount of this thing. It's painfully boring yeah. and extremely low energy for someone in Trump's orbit. I, I was excited for it to be like... Or like, you know, some exciting batshit craziness. but Or no. like good editing, like uh, something like, that, that, I don't know, makes it compelling. But that's it really was, was just, it was it was incoherent rambling. That's why I was thing. hoping it'd be like a Dinesh D'Souza, like his shit's garbage, but like he puts a lot of money and effort into it. There's like reenactments. It's super yeah. over the top dramatic. Yeah, it's like the uh, the OG uh, Zeitgeist movie. Yeah. You gotta edit it together like that. Real compelling shit. So, yeah, we thought that maybe there would be some unintentionally funny moments. Uh, but aside from the overabundance of bland B-roll edited into the whole thing at quite impressive timing, uh, it really is just as boring as you might imagine it to be. My favorite part, and I'm going to show it here, is when they're like, uh, they're playing whack-a-mole. And it's literally B-roll of a child playing whack-a-mole. Oh, that's what that is. <laughs> Did he say something about a bagel? Uh, I don't know. Is that like is that what people are bringing up? I I I, I watched like the first thirty minutes and then skipped around a bit because he's just he's just rambling and he's like reading off the prompter, but there's no like he's like oh we're gonna do this in one take. So he talks over himself a whole lot yeah. and like missteps in 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 certain words. So it's it's pretty unwatchable. It's very boring. Yeah. So the only real highlights here were moments when it felt as though Mr. Lindell was in over his head and his sentences became erratic. Uh, then again, he's been talking like that for weeks now in nearly every appearance he's made. Um, the man needs a good night's sleep, which is pretty ironic since he is a pillow salesman. Yes. Um, I think Will Summer posted that, uh, I don't know what his source on this was, but it was like Lindell has been awake 21 hours a day for the last like month. That's what we said on the, thing on the first episode of this week. I'm yeah. like, this guy obviously is not getting like, sleep. But yeah, like it's not a joke. He literally has been barely sleeping. Mm hmm. Anyway, here's a clip that will give you a basic understanding of what this entire thing's about. Yeah. The biggest thing against humanity and our country is this attack through these machines. They got this opened up, this revealed the, the machines to where we're at right now. So what you're going to watch during this show is 100 percent proof that the big thing was the theft by these other countries that came in to attack our country through these machines that are made to steal elections. Every election going forward in history, if these things would have happened, these two, and we would, have, we would have never known, every single vote you would have ever made wouldn't have mattered. Somebody else would have made that vote. And we've all seen in this past month, you think it wasn't communists coming in and taking this over with people here. This is an attack not only on other those other countries, with communism, but they had domestic traitors right here in our country. Whatever's going on right now, we're seeing it. They're suppressing cancel culture. They're trying to cancel us all out. I just seen churches, the Christian churches, they're being attacked right now. People on social media, anyone that speaks up, they're going, you can't say that, <coughs> you're gone. It's like they're, right now they're doing whack-a-mole because they know, they knew they were so close 
so close that we would never know in history what happened. But guess what? Now we do. All right, now, well, now that Absolute Truth has been released, uh, we're assuming that an update on the potential lawsuits from Dominion and Smartmatic won't be too far behind, uh, considering that everyone else, media outlets included, has stopped spreading misinformation about those companies after the lawsuits are filed. We're pretty sure that Mr. Lindell here is high on their radar right now. He's basically being like, sue me, me, sue me. It's me, Mike Lindell. Send a lawsuit to my pillow guy. <laughs> Uh, he might actually lose his pillow company over this. I I don't even know how he can afford all this fucking advertising. Like how? No, because he's already bought it for the pillows. But like, even when he was doing pillow ads all the time, how many people are buying these fucking pillows? Uh, they've made over a billion dollars. What? Yeah, there's a lot of what old the conservatives fuck? in this com uh, country. Okay. And I'll tell you what, there's not a lot of pillow advertising out there. It's always you just go down to, unless you're, you know, using one of our advertisers, uh, but you always just go down to like the Target or Walmart and you're like, ah, oh, extra firm. I'll get that one. Get the purple pillow. It's yeah, better. the purple pillow is good. Anyway, it hasn't been a good month for my pillow or my pillow guy anyway. I mean, a bunch of retail outlets stopped selling them because of Lindell's conspiracy peddling. Uh, they don't want to be associated with this shit. They're just trying to sell some pillows. People looking for some comfort for their necks. The beyond sleep. in Bed Bath and Beyond does not mean conspiracy theories. Whoa! <laughs> Ew! Yeah, uh, the official My Pillow Twitter account was banned from the site because Mike commandeered it after his own account was banned. Mm -hmm. um, their CEO might be facing what could only be described as a potentially catastrophic legal battle, and now they're going to be facing some stiff competition in the pillow market from a more progressive source. Activist and survivor of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas school shooting, David Hogg. He's yeah. in the pillow business. He is now in the pillow business. Uh, yeah, earlier this week on his Twitter account, Hogg posted, Mike Lindell is going to have some progressive competition soon. Only this time it will be union made in America. Have an emphasis on supporting progressive causes and not attempt a white supremacist <laughs> overthrow of the United States government. It's very, very little to ask for my pillow company. Yeah. And he adds, so you can sleep at night. Yeah. yeah perfect. Uh, he's provided a few updates in the following days, reiterating that his company's pillows will have strict ethical requirements on labor and sourcing, uh, that they've already got a name and a web domain, and that he is, in fact, serious about launching this pillow company and that it's not just a jab at Lindell. He's going to make pillows. Obviously, starting something like this takes time, and we all know how ruthless the pillow industry is these days. <laughs> Just take it one good look at Mike Lindell recently. It's a rough business. It is. Uh, but we hope to see an actual launch of the hog pillow, or whatever they're calling it, sometime soon. It, it should be called the spite pillow. Like, yeah. uh, like the spite shop that Larry David opened in the most recent uh, <laughs> season of Curb. Yeah. It's, it's like just... the My Pillow, except cheaper and ethically made. Yeah. Yeah. But amidst all this pillow talk <laughs> and election fraud conspiracy theory talk, one person in particular has been oddly silent. Mm -hmm. And it's a person who, uh, if the claims of election fraud were true, you would assume they would be out there on the front line, screaming it as loud as humanly possible. That person, former President <laughs> Donald Trump, yeah, uh, yeah. Where's what? he at? Where are you at, buddy? Yeah. Been real quiet out here. Mm -hmm. Is he alive? What's he doing? Yeah, so it's very out of character for Donald Trump to not be dominating the airwaves and social media feeds right now. And yes, we are aware that he has been banned from Twitter and Facebook and a, a bunch of other shit for uh, um, inciting an insurrection on the U.S. Capitol. But he could very easily just call in or appear via camera feed on any number of news programs uh, anytime he wants from his Mar-a-Lago compound or do any number of press releases. Uh, he could do anything. Yeah. He could fly straight to Fox News and appear... In the studio. Yeah. He obviously doesn't care about wearing a mask or staying isolated. He could be doing rallies. Like, I my, I theorized, like, a year rallies, ago yeah. that I was like, win or lose, he's just going to keep doing rallies for the rest of his life. So it is... It's the easiest money in the fucking world. It is strange that he's completely disappeared. It's out of character. Yeah. But uh, the last two weeks, yeah, nothing from the Trump camp. Him. Until Thursday of this past week when Trump finally released a statement. Yeah. Uh, so what could this very important important statement be in regards to? The election? Uh, a quote regarding Joe Biden's recent executive orders that reversed Joe. many of Trump's policies? Maybe a nice letter to his supporters thanking them and letting them know that he still stands with them and something I love you. coming soon? Uh, no, it wasn't any of those. It was a letter to the Screen Actors Guild basically telling them to fuck off and that you can't fire me. I quit. You fired. Uh, and yeah, you can tell very easily that Donald Trump wrote this letter all by himself. Uh, let's give it a quick read. And uh, I know it's been a while, but Elliot, you need to brush off that Donald Trump accent. Uh, it's, been, it's been a little while. I don't know if you still got it. And, and quick note, yes, this is actually real. 
And the letter starts off with what appears to be the presidential seal on the letterhead, but it's actually, to be fair, just the U.S. seal, which is very similar but different. But you can tell why he used it. Yeah, it's from, um, from the desk of the former president. Yeah, uh, here's, here's the letter. I write to you today regarding the so-called disciplinary committee hearing aimed at revoking my union membership. Who cares? <laughs> While I'm not familiar with your work, I'm very proud of my work on movies such as Home Alone 2, Zoolander, and Wall Street, colon, Money Never Sleeps, and television shows including The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Saturday Night Live, and of course, one of the most successful shows in television history, uh, The Apprentice, to name just a few. I've also greatly helped the cable news television business, said to be a dying platform with not much time left until I got involved in politics and created thousands of jobs at networks such as MSDNC and <laughs> Fake News CNN, among many others. Which brings me to your blatant attempt at free media attention to distract from your dismal record as a union. Your organization has done little for its members and nothing for me besides collecting dues and promoting dangerous, un-American policies and ideas, as evident by your massive unemployment rates and lawsuits from celebrated actors who even recorded a video asking, why is the union fighting for me? These, however, are policy failures. Your disciplinary failures are even more egregious. I no longer wish to be associated with your union. As such, this letter is to inform you of my immediate resignation from SAG-AFTRA. You have done nothing for me. Regards, President Donald J. Trump. First, public statement. Welcome back, sir. Yeah. Uh, anyway, SAG-AFTRA penned up an official reply to Trump's letter uh, here from their website. SAG after today released the below statement regarding Donald J. Trump's resignation from the union in response to disciplinary charges filed by SAG after President Gabrielle Carteris and National Executive Director David White. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. All right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, while we're doing Trump updates, we should point out that his participation as Pied Piper of the insurrectionists who raided the Capitol building uh, might have been a stupid move for more than just the many extremely serious reasons that we've mentioned in the days and weeks that followed. Mm -hmm. uh, it might have hurt him financially because as recently as December, it appears as though the Trump organization was in negotiations with Parler for a large stake in the company in exchange for Trump moving all of his posts and media over to their platform and giving them an exclusivity window for new content. Yeah. Uh, Trump would have had to post everything to Parler first, and it would have to remain there for four hours before he could share it on uh, any other website or social media platform. It's real groundbreaking uh, stuff there. No one, I don't think anyone's ever done that and for also, social. They were going to say, too, that uh, once he posts elsewhere after that four-hour window, he would have to uh, link back to the Parler post. Yeah. So there was a whole like contractual thing where, like, all right, we're getting this, like, cri it's like signing an exclusivity deal with, like, Twitch. Yeah, but they're just posts. Yeah. Anyway, in exchange for Trump's exclusivity uh, in records obtained by BuzzFeed News, Parler was willing to hand over 40% of their business directly to the Trump organization. So he would have owned 40% of Parler wow. in exchange for this. Now, this could have been a substantial payday for Trump as an exclusive media deal for not only an ex-president, but someone with a cult following and someone who posts nonstop. It would have been extremely fruitful. Yeah. But... I would have joined. <laughs> but he incited a riot on the Capitol. And it turns out that a lot of those people posted photos, videos, and stories straight to Parler, which not only made it a lot easier for them to get caught, painting Parler as some sort of honeypot for dummies, but it also resulted in Parler losing its web hosting from AWS. Now, in addition to that, Trump had his Facebook and Twitter accounts taken away from him, which means an exclusivity deal with Parler would have lost substantial value because he literally couldn't post anywhere else if he wanted to. I mean, that's rake stipping if I've ever seen yeah. it. He, he ruined an exclusivity clause where he could have owned half of a company almost. And But it's like, oh, sir, okay, well, yeah, you can post on our website now, but we're not going to pay you for it because you literally can't post anywhere else. Yeah, we're the only place you got. <laughs> so we'll be taking that 40%. Yeah. Though. All he had to do was... I don't know, not inspire an insurrection, and he could have spent the rest of his days monetizing shit posts. It would have been the best retirement plan that possible. That would have been so funny, because you know immediately Twitter accounts would have sprung up to just screenshot his posts and yeah. repost them, and Parler would have to DMCA uh, screenshot posts on Twitter. It would have been hilarious. Yeah, but it would have been, like, all he had to do is post the rest of his life, and he would have made a lot of money. Yeah. He's also, he's lost a bunch of contracts for golf tournaments at his clubs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, bunch of people are uh, not renewing their memberships at Mar-a-Lago. It's that damn cancel uh, culture. <laughs> yeah. Cancel culture Strikes has again. come for the president. Mm. You have deplatformed the president. 
Anyway, cool. Uh, <laughs> let's take a quick break now to thank today's sponsor before we get to the rest of the news. This episode is sponsored by Upstart. If you have multiple credit cards, you know that tracking multiple balances, due dates, and website logins can be stressful. Upstart makes things simple with one monthly payment in one place. Upstart is the fast and easy way to get a personal loan to pay off your debt all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple fixed monthly payment. Upstart finds smarter rates with trusted partners because they assess more than just your credit score. With a five minute online rate check, you can see your rate upfront for loans from $1,000 to $50,000. You can get approved the same day and receive funds as fast as one business day. If debt is taking over your life, it's time to get a fresh start with Upstart. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash newsdump. That is upstart.com slash newsdump. Use our URL so they know that we sent you. Here's the fine print. Loan amount will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash newsdump. All right, back to the news now with some tidbits from the world of entertainment, starting with, as always, uh, a Snyder Cut update. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, first of all, the film's gonna it's rated R, as you as if you didn't know that already. But yeah. uh, now the MPAA has made it official. And they also said that this film is the greatest cinematic experience in the history of the silver screen, and all the haters are gonna feel so stupid. Mm-hmm. And now no. we love the MPAA, right, folks? Yeah, we love we love the MPAA. <laughs> uh, no, they didn't say that. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's rated R for violence and some language. No tits? Come on, Zach. Yeah. Anyway, we assume the some language is is in there because, because as we're all aware by now, Zack Snyder is going to have Batman say the F word. Yep. And I'm still not clear on whether it's the fuck word or the gay slur. <laughs> uh, You're going to have to find out. Damn, Batman said some homophobic shit. And it's going to be after the credits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why are you still here? <laughs> uh, now, in addition to that non-news, there was a little sneak peek release this week that people were interested in. A look at Jared Leto's Joker from Zack Snyder's Justice League. And look, we already know what Jared Leto's Joker looks like, so who cares, right? Wait, what the hell is that? No, no, hold on. Not fair. This is not fair. His Joker looks terrible, and you have to stick with that. Yeah, you can't is bullshit. You this can't is go, revisionism. Yeah, altering Jared Leto's Joker to look more sinister or scary because you have the gift of hindsight. Getting to redo something like that? that you or someone else that worked under you, I mean, he was like the executive producer, right, on all this, uh, just because they screwed it up, you can't go back and change it because of fan reaction. That is unfair to other directors who have to live with their mistakes. Yeah, this is bullshit. Still, I mean, it's just a blurry photo, but this Joker looks different. Not the weirdo gangster Joker that we saw in David Ayer's Suicide Squad. I don't know, this bums me out because it's, it's, he's getting a redo. Yeah, it's not... On hindsight. It's not cool. Not fair. Whatever, this movie comes out in a month, so get ready. Greatest movie ever. You're all going to be feeling so stupid for all this shit you talked <laughs> on Justice League, because it's going to be the greatest movie ever made. I think it was uh, uh, Roxy from the, that we know from the Schmodown posted like, all right, I'll admit it. I said a, a, a Snyder cut of Justice League didn't exist. You guys were right. All right. And I just like replied back and was like, yep. 20 years ago, I said the iPhone didn't exist, yet here I am holding one in my hand. <laughs> Checkmate. <laughs> the cut didn't exist. It really didn't. Anyway, over in Game Stonk and Wall Street Bets News, oh yeah, that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been a pretty calm and sobering week for retail investors as they witness the stock prices of both AMC and GameStop and Nokia and a bunch of other shit creep lower and lower and lower on a daily basis. But uh, the real drama continued over on the Wall Street Bets subreddit, where there was essentially the Reddit version of a coup between the old mods of the subreddit and the newer, more active moderators watching over things as popularity spiked, bringing all sorts of attention down on this community, both good and bad. Mm -hmm. Uh, From Kotaku, overnight, Wall Street Bets moderator ZJZ, one of the most active mods in recent weeks as it exploded in popularity, posted a now-deleted thread on the subreddit titled, Wall Street Bets Will Die Soon Unless the Admins Save Us. It went on to charge earlier mods who had previously laid dormant of coming back to try and usurp control of the community to profit off the attention, but did not call anyone out by name. Quote, they've been busy creating private email addresses to funnel all the press correspondence away for their own gain, talking shit about all the active mods and scrambling to get paid from some movie deal, ZJZ wrote. The other plan is that some friend of the top mods has wormed into his brain and is going to use Wall Street Bets as a springboard to launch some stupid crypto shit. 
Uh, he continues, quote, Now that the movie studios are buying up story rights and optioning scripts for Rogozinski's story and others, it's clear the legacy behind Wall Street bets could be lucrative beyond the stock trading. Even before this week, many were trying to cash in on the GameStop meme stock phenomenon by creating and selling Wall Street bets and GameStop inspired merchandise. Even UK game retailer Game tried to get in on the action, which, again, is hilarious because you just have to imagine someone getting their Game Stonks shirt in the mail just weeks from now, if not months from now after all this has died down. Yeah. Uh, especially if they ended up like losing a bunch of money on it. Oh, cool. My Kofifi shirt finally showed up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, as an update to all of this, it looks like Reddit administrators actually stepped in and sorted things out and gave power back to the mods that were running it more recently. Um, quote, while not all of them have been re restored, ZJZ is apparently still no longer a moderator. The new mods have been going through and unbanning users who had previously been sanctioned for speaking out about the WSB coup d'etat. Meanwhile, the old mods denied claim they had returned to try and make a quick buck. When reached out on their new Twitter account, the top moderator said they wanted to strike a movie deal, but were planning to give any proceeds to charity. Mm. That's what the New York Times reported. The top moderator said that the battle was also rooted in their desire to modernize the board, given all the new people who have begun using it. Opposing moderators like ZJZ, they said, wanted to keep the more homespun feeling of what Wall Street's bets used to be. So there you go. And it, the, the, Wall Street bets was like, even last week before, was being infiltrated by people who were like yeah. trying to pump stocks or say that certain things were happening. And it was like brand new accounts and they were getting flared. And like, it's just a mess. This isn't even the first time something like that's happened to the sub. Like one of the, I think the guy who actually started the sub got the boot because mm -hmm. he started like trying to monetize it like with his own website and like tried to spin it off into like an actual legit financial uh, but they did have, advisory uh, company. They did have Mark Cuban on this week. Yeah. And Mark Cuban was just like, hodl. Yeah. Also, Doge, let's go. But also, I'm I'm rich as fuck, and it yeah. doesn't matter. None of this matters to yeah, me. I'm playing really with your money. Fucking matter. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, finally, if anyone cares, the nominees for the Golden Globes <laughs> were announced uh, for a year that was completely odd and mostly lacking because of um, oh yeah that worldwide pandemic. Mm -hmm. So it looks like the ceremony ceremony will be again hosted by Amy Poehler and Tina Fey, which is uh, cool. That's yeah. nice. But they'll be hosting live from opposite ends of the country with Tina Fey at a location in New York and Amy Poehler in Los Angeles. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how well that works. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be lots of uh, fumbles live. Turn on your mic! <laughs> uh, we assume all the nominees and winners will be joining the ceremony virtually as well, but uh, I don't know. What the hell do we know? This city's just letting people do whatever the fuck they want right now. Mm -hmm. um, this temperature looks great. Everyone get out! Yeah. Uh, anyway, here's some nominees for the uh, the best picture and TV categories. And we'll leave a link below so you can check out the rest. Yeah. Best picture, uh, best motion picture. Best Motion Picture Drama, Mank, Nomadland, Promising Young Woman, and The Trial of the Chicago 7. I've only heard of two of those, and I've seen none. I saw Mank. It was fine. I, the, people were, like, it, just gushing about this movie. Yeah. Maybe I'm too slow. But uh, I, I was like, yeah, this is, this is fine. I was enjoying it, but it wasn't like, oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for Best Motion Picture, Musical or Comedy, you got Borat, Subsequent Movie Film, Hamilton, Music, Palm Springs, and The Prom. I, 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 I liked Borat a lot. Well, that was good. Uh, I loved Hamilton. I really did. But that was just like, that was just a cam of the, the, the play. Yeah, but that was like back in like sort of the beginning of the pandemic. It was like early summer, like July. And it was like, you know, it, it like inspired hope. And it was one of those like it was one of the first like big event things that happened during the pandemic from home. So I, I don't know. There was weird emotional attachments to that. Oh, Palm Springs also was like a perfect movie for I still haven't watched the, that. the new normal because it's like a Groundhog Day kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you should watch it. You would love it. Yeah, I'm sure I would. I just not actually it. filmed in Palm Springs. What? Yeah, you'd think they would since it's right there. It's but right there. No. Where? Okay. It was filmed up in the uh, like Lancaster Palmdale or something like that. All right. Okay. For best motion picture animated, you got The Crudes, A New Age, Onward, Over the Moon, Soul, and Wolf Walkers. I only know about one of those. I, I saw Soul on Oh, good. On I was going to ask. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't paying the closest attention. What? And I was a little bit drunk. But it, it was cool. I, I was like, yes. Yeah, I liked all the real world segments, the, the, the afterlife segments. I was like, this looks like shit. This looks Soul like a fucking mobile game. destroyed me. Yeah. I was, uh, I was a Maybe mess. Maybe I wasn't paying close enough attention. Yeah, obviously you weren't. Anyways, I, I loved Onward, too. Onward is one of my favorite Pixar movies. I don't even know what Onward is. It's, uh, you know, fucking, uh, not Ace of Butterfield, the other one. 
Spider-Man. What's it about? Spider-Man and fucking Chris Pratt go on a journey uh, to find their dead dad, bring him back to life. What? I I have no idea what you're He's just pants. What? It's a great movie. You'd love it. Okay. It came out right before the pandemic. You had to be there. Okay. Big snub on Sonic, though. Oh, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, best television series drama, The Crown, Lovecraft Country, The Mandalorian, uh, Ozark, and Ratched. 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 <laughs> I don't know. I've seen The Crown. Great. Mandalorian. Love it. Ozark. I heard good things. I've only seen well, Ozark. I've and... realized we don't fucking watch anything. Yeah. <laughs> Who I, are we? I watch shows. I watch them late. But I am all caught up on Ozark. It's a great show. See, that's the thing is like, I, I mean, certain movies I did see when they came out, but I... And a big fan of going to the movie theater. Yeah. So I would go to the movie theater like every week to see movies. And now it's like, oh, oh yeah, it came out. I'm going to watch that. And then I just don't watch it. And then I forget about it. Yeah. Yeah, you got to. I, I keep a, a list. And it just gets longer and longer. <laughs> yeah. Best television series, musical or comedy. You got Emily in Paris. Uh, uh, Emily in Paris. Emily. Ugh, fuck off. <laughs> the Flight Attendant. The Great. Schitt's Creek. Ted Lasso, and Weekly Weird News from Internet Today. Oh, oh thank hey, you. Thanks. It's just nice to be nominated. Yeah, we wow, love you. Finally thank some you. recognition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I heard Ted Lasso's great. I love Shit's Creek. Uh, that's it. That's all My I've seen. My wife's been watching The Flight Attendant, and it seems good. All right. But I have not been paying close attention. <laughs> As per usual, They should apparently. give it to Weekly Weird News. Yeah, I think so. Netflix continues to dominate the awards circuit. They've got 22 nominations in the movies category and 20 in TV. Uh, the company that comes closest to them uh, in film is Amazon Studios with just seven, and mm-hmm. HBO for TV with seven nominations as well. So Netflix just completely dominating. No love for the boys, huh? That's strange, right? I think The boys is the kind of show that any, like... Institution like this is going to turn their nose up. And the be like, Golden Globes? Trash. Well, I guess it like, is international press. Oh, we, oui, we. Oui, oui. But I feel like international press would love uh, the boys because it is the most like anti American show around. It's like the whole fucking show is just a giant critique of uh, everything wrong with America. Eh, you know the French. They're all up their own asses. Yeah. I don't know. Sorry, French. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyways, that's it for this week's episode of News Dump. I'm going to go have some fromage. Yes. Yeah, uh, say goodbye to all of our French viewers. Uh, anyways, monsieur. if you want to see Spinach send an email, check out our most recent episode of Tech News Day. <laughs> I, I, did, I put that, that story is only there so I could Photoshop a Spinach sending an email. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good thumbnail. Uh, and then if you want to hear more about Mike Lindell, we promise we're not going to... It's just like GameStop. The Mike Lindell coverage will slow down as soon as yeah. uh, he is taken care it's... of by the lawsuit. Uh, so check that out over there, and we'll see you very soon for Weekly Weird News. Also, uh, have a great Super Bowl. Go Tom Brady Buccaneers. Touchdown. It's probably going to be the Chiefs. Yeah. <laughs>